In recent years, there's been an apparent rise in the number of children with autism. So what are some of the possible causes of this change in the number of reported cases of autism? Well, the first thing we can say is it has nothing to do with vaccines. I repeat that, it has absolutely nothing to do with vaccines. This all dates back to Dr. Andrew Wakefield, attempting to link bowel disease and autism to multiple dose vaccines that were being used at the time. Dr. Voigt even suggested that single doses of the vaccine would be safer than multiple dose vaccine. However, data upon which he based these claims were found to be grossly manipulated, including statements that children had no pre existing conditions when they clearly did have. Now, the reason why Dr. Wakefield committed this fraud was which resulted in numerous children dying because they weren't given vaccines in time it appears to be that he had a huge financial motive for showing a link to autism and discrediting the vaccination. The catalogue of misconduct that Dr. Wakefield conducted, including acting dishonestly and inflicting unnecessary pain on patients, resulted in being struck off as a doctor. In the wake of Mr. Wakefield's actions, 10 studies involving over 1 million children have now been conducted into the possible link between autism and vaccines. These studies have proved there is absolutely no link between autism and vaccines. However, there are some parents that claim anecdotal evidence of a couple of days after getting the vaccine, their child started showing signs of autism. Whilst these claims could be dismissed on the basis of correlation, it doesn't mean causation. It goes further than this. These claims have fundamentally failed to understand what autism is and how it actually works. People with autism have physically different brains to the rest of the population. Basically, their brains are wired differently. In general, people with autism have more synapses or connections between the nerve fibres in the brain. This in turn alters the way they think and process the environment around them. Now, all this structural change within the brain doesn't happen overnight. Instead, it takes months to develop. The idea will be a perceptible change after a few days in the brain fundamentally flawed. So vaccines out of the way. Next thing to consider is that though there is an apparent rise in the number of children with autism, is this rise a genuine rise in the number of cases or is something else going on? There well, certainly is a greater awareness of autism and Asperger's syndrome, both among the general public and the medical profession. This combined with a greater societal acceptance it certainly led to an increase in the number of children being diagnosed with autism, possibly even over diagnosis of the condition. However, doubtful that the increase related to better diagnosis accounts for all of the increased cases, so it's likely there may be some other factor behind the increase. Now, the main subject that people are focused on in relation to increase in cases of autism is some form of environmental change. Recent human technologies development, we've been putting a wide range of new chemicals into the environment. Some of these could have resulted in changes in human biology. However, the distribution of new cases of autism doesn't seem to reflect any pattern of population distribution, both within a specific country and globally. This means that things like power stations, pesticides, specialised diet are unlikely to be responsible for the increase in the number of cases of autism. Now, one possible environmental factor, which does, however, to appear to match the timeline of growth in cases of autism and the distribution, is that of microscopic pieces of plastic contaminating the environment. However, whilst the amount of plastic contamination in the environment does match up with the growth in autism, there isn't yet any clear link as to how plastic could create these changes in the brain. The plastic can't be ruled out as part of the answer. However, there is another possible cause in the increase of the number of cases, but it may seem a bit counterintuitive. It isn't something that we humans have been recently polluting the environment with, but rather something we've stopped polluting it with. Before we examine this closer, we really should take a closer look at autism itself. Now, although autism is referred to as a disorder, and some autistic people do have difficulty functioning in the crowded, fast-changing modern society, the structural changes that are present in someone who has autism just means that their brain functions differently. Not necessarily better or worse than someone without autism, just different. 
It means if you put someone with autism in a situation which they're not suited, they'll function badly. If you put them in a situation to which they're suited, they'll function well. The problem is, a lot of the situations in modern society, the likelihood of being well suited has actually decreased. In the earlier times, however, traits that autistic people could have had could have made them highly useful to society. Now, whilst autistic people display as much variety as any other group, there are some traits that are relatively common. We'll go through some of them it might help you understand autism. For instance, they rarely lie. They don't tend to judge people or manipulate them. They tend not to be materialistic. They also have good memories, attention to detail, and be passionate about things that really interest them. So it's generally good with repetitive tasks and those that involve maths. And when you put all these details together, you can say that these would have been generally valued members of a village or small community. There are a number of jobs from weavers to record keepers that would be actually better at than the rest of society. In addition to this, the ability to think totally different ways than the rest of society probably means that many of the changes brought about to create modern society that we now live in are likely have been driven by autistic people even though they may not now enjoy all that the new society represents. Now, autism itself was identified as a condition only until the early part of the 20th century. It wasn't really until about 50 years ago that we had any idea how widespread the condition was. It means before the 20th century, we really don't have a clue about how many people historically had autism. There is a possibility that the numbers back then were actually similar the current modern day levels. So rather than seeing a dramatic increase in autism since around the 1970s, what we're actually seeing is a historic low around the 1970s and a recent return to normal levels. And that puts a different look on things. When you put all this together, there is a chemical in the environment that does alter the brain. The amount of it in the environment has been dramatically reduced in recent years. And that chemical is lead. Lead acts on the developing brain to reduce the formation of synapses or connections in the brain. And people with autism, as I said, have more synapse connections than the general population. It's possible increased levels of lead in the environment mask the number of people with autism. As we remove the lead pollution from the environment, those people with autistic traits are now becoming more visible in the general population. I said earlier, this appeared to be on the surface a bit counterintuitive. But when you think of people with autism as being different, rather than damaged, the lack of lead in the environment is a distinct possibility as to why the change has naturally happened.